Well, there you have it, guys. That's the uh, last part for the um, build on the plasma cutter. So we got everything cut out. We got a nice little uh, placard for the side of the smoker. Welcome back to the garage, guys. We thought we'd shoot a quick video today to answer a few questions that we're getting from people about our THC, where we're at, and also clarify a couple things that people are having issues with. So the first thing we want to talk about is the THC. I've got a completed THC in my hands here, but unfortunately, it doesn't work. <laughs> uh, we had a little problem with the design of the board, and um, we've got a second round of boards coming in shortly, and we'll be able to get those out for beta testing real quick. So I want to go through some of the issues that we've had and just show you a little bit about electronic development. Well guys, here's the actual THC that we've been using on our machine for quite some time. It's, it's kind of a crude looking device here, but what happens when you do electronic development, you have to start out with what's called a perf board. It's back in here. It's just a circuit board with a number of different holes in it that lets you attach components. Um, so everything you have to run your own wires as traces and you have to hook up components like this encoder, opto isolators, relays, displays, Arduinos, capacitors, all that type of stuff manually. And uh, it does work, but this is going to be difficult for people to deal with something like this. So in order to get this product out there, we have to take it and streamline, streamline it and make it more of a professional design. So what we did is we took everything here, not including the display and the Arduino, and we put it all into a board like this. We had this board made by PCB Way, and so the encoder, the two-channel relay, the opto isolator, the stud blocks, and then our display pops in here and our Arduino pops in there and then the THC is ready to function. To, to use the THC you scroll through the menus and when you want to select the menu you just push it, scroll through the menu, push it and that's kind of to enter all the inputs on the THC. One of the problems we had is when we added these opto isolators on here, these surface mounts, we forgot to add a couple resistors to it. So the opto isolators didn't work. So that was a design fault on ours. We just forgot to do it when we were drawing the traces. So one of the things we have to do is, Jackson, did we use Fusion when we drew the traces? Yeah. We, yeah, we use Fusion to, we could see them right there, the little tiny wires. So we have to place all the components on this board and then draw all the wires uh, to connect everything. Yeah, and this is actually a two-sided board, so there's traces on this side, and there's a different set of traces on this side. So you can see when we added the resistor to get things working. But anyway, we've got the second round of these coming, and we should have these available to get sent out shortly. Um, do we have an ETA, Jackson? Uh, they're saying 14 to 16 days right now. Okay. Um, they so, were pretty accurate last time. So... Uh, with that, um, that's where we're at with the THC. We, we do have our list of um, people to do the beta testing. We haven't contacted you yet, so so don't feel like you haven't been um, you've been ignored or anything. You've all been ignored because because the uh, our initial test with the boards didn't go as planned. So should have these available to get sent out for testing shortly. Um, uh, the good news is there's a second component to it, the voltage divider. If your plasma cutter doesn't have a 50 to 1 step down, um, our, we made a voltage divider that, that'll step it down for you, you know, to come into the THC. Also in here, Jackson, aren't we programmable for different voltages? Yeah. Step downs? Yeah, so if you, if you have like a 100 to 1... Um, voltage divider on your plasma cutter like a built-in one um, you can use the menus to to set the parameters from 50 to 100 or yes. or 40 to a one step down so it, it is going to be able to be used with a variety of plasma cutters 
So the next thing we want to talk about is shielding. You know, it's very important on all plasma cutters to use proper shielding. And the wire has to be shielded to make sure we don't get electrical noise throughout the machine. A couple of things that you can see if you have electrical noise. One, the Z-axis probe switch seems to be very susceptible to noise. And uh, using open builds control, you'll see the Z-axis um, actuate on and off, on and off throughout a cut. The other thing would be your stepper motors. They could be moving and then do something weird, like just stop for a little bit and then keep moving, or they might take a big jump. Um, that's a sign that you're having some electrical interference. Uh, with a properly shielded machine, you won't have any issue. Now, in the instructions, it does tells you, tells you to use a high frequency plasma. <laughs> in the instructions, it tells you to use a low frequency blowback start plasma cutter. That's, that's we feel it's very critical. Um, it can be done to use a high frequency. We haven't experimented with it, but there's lots of forms online that you could go to to get more information about that. But using a low frequency plasma cutter, if you follow our tips, you'll have no issues with any noise in the machine. So guys, on the machine, all the wiring on the machine should be a shielded jacketed cable. And I have two different types here that I just want to, they're just things we had laying around, but I want to show you what that means by shielded and the different types of jackets on them. So I'm just going to use a razor blade here to pop this open and eh, give it a little more. So I'll pull that off. Now inside here, this particular cable, I have a mylar wrap that's just to hold it again together and I'll explain what that does in a minute and then I have two fillers so this mylar and the fillers we can just trim that off just take a small cutter and we'll get those trimmed off some tough stuff Okay, so now I've got a foil on this cable. And we can already see this bare wire that's sticking out here. That is what's called the drain wire or the shield. So we have a foil here. Actually, in this case, there's two foils. And the drain wire or the shield wire. And that makes contact with these foils. Now, in this case, this cable has two different twisted pairs and they're twisted together um, and it's just something the industry does when you have a twisted pair it keeps uh, the wires from emitting interference the shielding is protecting them from getting interference so this shield is just a it's just a piece of foil will get pulled back and trimmed off on this particular cable. The drain wire is in contact with that, so that's what's gonna dissipate any interference, and we're gonna show you how to hook that up. So I'm gonna pull that drain wire back, or pull that foil back and trim it off. Now, if we took a look at this um, cable, this jacket of cable is called a sleeved jacket. So this was put on as a sleeve over top of this and that's why it had the filler to make it round so this is a sleeved cable this one here is a little bit different a um, little tougher to work with but I'm gonna cut that and pull it off in this case well you're gonna go there's no foil in that one well if I cut this open we're gonna see the foil inside um, this jacket on this one is an extruded jacket that's put on and the foil gets sucked right into the extrusion and it's very tough to, to separate the two so it's almost always when you strip the jacket it's gonna come out of there it's gonna come out on there if we peek inside you can see how the form of the cables molded right into the jacket um, this one has the drain wire inside of the foil and there's our drain wire right there 
and that's contacting the foil all the way through the cable. So just two different styles of jacketed cable, but they both have the shield and the drain wire, and that's very important to have this style of jacketed cable, one or the other. But now we're gonna go through how to hook up this uh, drain wire, how to utilize this. So we're back on our drain wire here, and we've hooked, we've made just a little jumper here. We use black for that. We have a ring terminal on it, approximately six inches long. So we're gonna take that, we're gonna slide a piece of heat shrink on. We're gonna just um, give these a little wrap together on there. We're gonna take a little bit of flux here and drop a little flux on. And we're gonna take our soldering iron and we'll just solder these two together. Okay, it's been soldered together. We're gonna take a damp paper towel and just wipe off some of the flux. Just so that doesn't stay in there. We're gonna slide the heat shrink on and we're gonna heat shrink this. Now most people would stop there, but that's not the proper way to do it. The proper way to do it is take a second piece of heat shrink and put this on and bring it down and half on the jacket and halfway up. Now we would normally hook these wires up first, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So we're going to shrink this on. Okay. Um, first question some of you are going to have is, why did that take so long? Well, this heat shrink here is a dual wall adhesive heat shrink. So it's actually sealing this along the edge so that no moisture or anything's gonna get in there. Uh, what that does is that stabilizes that drain wire because that drain wire doesn't have an insulation on it. So with some flexing, it's very easy that that breaks off. So um, that's our drain wire. Now, what do we do with it? Well, we've got this motor here that's coming up. Uh, we're gonna be using that for a project that's coming up. You guys will see that in a little while. but. Normally, before I would have put the second piece of heat shrink on, I would have cut these wires about three to four inches. It's important because that section there is not going to be shielded. So I, I'd have soldered those on. Now, um, it's important that in this cable it had twisted pairs. There was two twisted. The black and the white were twisted and the, uh, I don't know what the other colors were. Blue and the brown. And blue and brown were twisted. So it's important to use those wires to hook to the coils and I'm not sure what the coils are in this motor Jackson I think it's uh, green and black and red okay. and blue so if these two are a coil and these two are a coil they should be hooked to the twisted pair in there so what we would do I don't want to cut these yet because again we're not sure exactly how this is gonna fit in our project but um, we would have cut these and soldered them on just like we did the drain wire and now this drain wire with this ring terminal will get hooked on to the bolt here that mounts it and that'll keep this grounded and we'll do the same process on the other end and in our schematic it shows in our schematic it shows to hook that other end up to the common ground in the box so all of our cables will go back to a common ground they'll all be grounded to the motors with the z-axis wire switch wires we actually ground those to the Z, excuse me, with the Z axis switch wires, we ground that cable to the same lug that we ground the Z axis motor wires to. And uh, we'll get a picture of that out on the machine for you. The last thing we want to talk about today, uh, questions from the customers, is this little guy. This is our six pin relay that we call out in the bill of materials and a lot of people are having trouble hooking this up and we want to go through some of the common issues 
with this and why you might not have success hooking it up properly. Okay guys, here's a sample of that six pin relay that we call out um, to use for triggering the torch. So one thing about this relay is there's two sides to it. There's your input side and, no oh, excuse me, there's That's your input, input side and your output side. So the first thing I want to talk about is on your input side there has to be three wires hooked to the machine. You have to have the DC positive, the DC negative, and the in. Sometimes this could be labeled as trigger on your relay. Uh, these relays are sourced from a number of different manufacturers. And it's very common that manufacturers might mix up this labeling. Well, when I say mix up, they just designed it where, the, where these connotations where you hook it up might not be always in the same. They might be in DC plus, DC minus. Could be reversed. So it's very important when reading the schematic, you hook it up to the labels on the input side. Don't hook it up uh, on the because of the picture. Well, the picture shows I put the five volt wire to DC or to the one furthest on the left. Well, don't go by the picture. You have to go by the labels. And on this side, there has to be three wires hooked up on the input side. Uh, unlike a normal relay, which some of you might be used to, they can operate just on uh, two wires on the input side, the DC in and the, D or the DC positive, DC negative. This one actually requires three. On the output side, the same thing. We have a normally open, a common, and a normally closed. But on this side, you're only gonna use two wires and we hook the two wires up to normally open and common. On this side, it doesn't matter which ones go to which one. They can be swapped around because it's just a continuity switch that works it. So the input side, they have to be exactly where they're supposed to be here. As long as we've got them hooked to common and normally open, we should be fine. The last thing I wanna talk about about this relay is on this particular relay, it says right here there's a high and a low trigger on this. I'm not gonna get into what the differences are between high and low, but we have a little jumper here where we can see the high, or an H and an L. We have to have the jumper on the H side. So this is a small connector that pulls off and it's a two pin connector and there's three pins here. If I hook it to these two pins, then it's on the low mode. If I hook it to these two, it's on high. For our design, it has to be run in the high mode. Before we get blown up in the comments, I wanna talk about this, but on that section right here, this says 12 volts. This relay will not work with our current plasma cutter. It has to be a five volt relay. Um, this one we just had laying around. We don't have any spare five volts that aren't installed in something. So we just thought we'd mention that. Don't blow us up in the comments and make sure when you go to the Amazon page to order it, there's probably a button at the bottom where you can select the five or the 12. Make sure you get the five volt. So that's what we wanted to cover. With that guys, I hope you appreciate the uh, update on the THC and some of the tips and tricks we've done or uh, for the shielded wire and the relay. Hope that clears up a few items. Also, we've got a number of uh, projects coming up in the future that I think a lot of you are gonna be interested in. Jackson's gonna be doing a little less traveling for work in the next few months. So, and with winter coming here up in the Northland, uh, we should be able to spend some serious time on those projects and get them out to you guys. So with that, thanks around thanks a bunch for sticking around to the end. Make sure to like and subscribe.